twelve disciples to travel with you and be with you. But Lord, you took another step. You empowered them at Pentecost through the Holy Spirit so they could go out and reach others for Jesus Christ. As you sent to us the same Holy Spirit to go out and minister and reach others for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our scripture today is from the second book of Acts, starting with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Now how is it that each of us hears in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Peter addressed the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, <coughs> freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him, as David said about him. I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, you will not let your Holy One see decay. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So this sermon was not my choice. This was what Brian gave me to speak about today. And I think there's a little joke in here. He chose the one about the big mouth. <laughs> I'm not sure if he saved it for me or he just thought, oh, I could have no man. <laughs> um, so what we want to talk about today is uh, Peter. Um, Peter is one of those men that you hear a lot about. He is all throughout the scripture. Uh, 
following the Lord and, and messing up all over the place. Um, and I highly identify with that. Um, I think that is part of the interesting thing about him um, and his, honestly, his power uh, with the Holy Spirit in him. He was, he was a normal guy. He didn't, he, did, he tried to say he was, you know, I'm, I'm the good guy. I would never do anything wrong. And yet he messed up really, really bad a lot of times. But in the end, the interesting thing about him is he, he changed. He shifted. And so I want to talk a little bit about Peter. I'm probably not going to do this the way that, that would have normally been done. And I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit is going to use it anyway. So, um, so. In the book of Acts, we just read chapter 2, and the thing that you have to understand, they're talking about Pentecost, and I'm going to try to avoid talking heavily about that, but I want to talk about kind of what was leading up to that and how Peter sort of was connected to it. So the thing you got to know about Peter is that uh, he was definitely one of, he was one of the first. Many say he was the first. He was with Andrew, and he was called by Jesus. Um and he was the one who was, he was a fisherman. Many of them were fishermen at the time, so that's not unusual. Uh, but he was a fisherman, and, and Jesus came to him, and he said, you know, give all this up. You know, he said, I'm going to make you a fisherman of men. And, you know, of course, Peter didn't know anything about what he was talking about at the moment, you know. Uh, but he did get in the boat, and he told Peter, you know, hey, let's go catch some fish. And Peter says, well, there's nothing out there. Uh, Jesus says, yeah, there is. Let's go get some. And so they throw their nets out, and they get so many fish that they can't even get them all in the boat. Uh, that was the first time that you really saw um, Peter probably was speechless, which is rare. Peter was a very outspoken, that's why he's known as the big mouth, because Peter was the one who, when Jesus said uh, at the Last Supper, when he said, you know, all of you are going to fall away. You're all going to eventually deny that you're even my disciple." And Peter goes, no, I, no, I would never do that. No, Lord, never. I would, I, I'm your most faithful, you know. And, uh, of course, uh, we know that before Jesus was crucified, he denied three different times that he knew Jesus. And it was almost innocent. Like some little girl goes up to him, hey, mister, hey, mister, aren't, aren't you that guy that was with Jesus? No, I don't know what you're talking about. You know? And, and, a, and a woman says to him, you know, I'm pretty sure you were. No. Uh-uh. And somebody else says, yeah, you were. He goes, no, I never knew that man. And, you know, Peter was one of these people that swore that he would never, ever, ever deny the Lord, and yet there he was doing it. And he, it, it, oh, it hurt him deeply. It scarred him deeply. Um, he was considered the rock by Jesus. He was, and yet Jesus knew even that. Jesus said he was going to build his church on the foundation of the rock. That's what Peter's name means. It means rock. And Jesus said, I'm going to build a foundation on how you're going to go out and share your word with my people. The scripture that we heard today was a, a sermon in and of itself. Um, it was truly from beginning to end. Here's everything you need to know. Here's the scripture references that go along with it. And you need to understand that everyone will be saved. The interesting thing is, he's speaking to mostly Jews. There were a few gathered there that were not Jewish at the time. But basically, he was preaching to the Jews and saying, you know, you, the, this man that you took and you crucified and you crushed, you couldn't crush him. He came back from the dead. But you did this. But he's doing this. He allowed this to happen so that we could save, so that he could save all people, everyone. But even Peter didn't know at that moment that it was all people. He just thought it was Jews. He thought he looked at Jesus as the king of the Jews, not as the king of the entire world. So the interesting thing, when you look at the scripture in Acts 2, and if you've never read Acts, gracious, you need to read Acts because there's a lot of stuff. The word Acts, is, is an applicable name. It's, a, it's an appropriate name because there's so many things happening in that book. Um, and you've got to remember where this was falling in. Jesus had been crucified, and these are the people that had witnessed what happened. They witnessed the crucifixion. They witnessed the fact that he came back from the dead. They witnessed the fact that he was no longer in the tomb. There was no body. 
There was nothing. And at this point in Acts, Jesus has come back and has talked to these men and women that were following him. Um, so when you read the book of Acts, you get to see all the really cool things. It's the beginning of the church. It's the beginning of what we're doing right now. Uh, it's the sharing of what they witnessed and making sure that everybody hears it. He wanted it to go to the ends of the earth. Something Ryan said recently is that we are the ends of the earth. I don't know about you, but I think of the ends of the earth like it's Antarctica or Africa or something like that. We are the ends of the earth. We are. And so when you think about the fact that Jesus did what he did and all of the message that he's trying to send to us, he's trying to reach you and me. We are the ends of the earth. And so I, you know, I praise God for that. So um, when we look at Acts 2, it's talking about, you know, Peter's preaching this message to the Jews. He's talking, whoops, hold on. These things do not stay on. And if you see anybody that does it really well, they are talented. Okay. So um, when you are looking at Acts 2 and, the, and you're hearing what Peter is saying, he's preaching from a standpoint of, I'm, t I'm speaking to the Jews. Here's what you did. You crucified him. He beat you anyway. And, and look at what's going to happen. He's going to save everybody. Well, the other scripture reference that's mentioned is Acts 11. Um, we didn't read from Acts 11 today, but I'm going to share with you a few things from it. Because there's a drastic shift. There's a ton of stuff that went on between 2 and 11. Way more than, there, than you can talk about in one message. Um, but in Acts 11, you see Peter talking again, which, shocker, he's talking. He talks a lot. He speaks up. He's one of those that, you know, have you ever been in a meeting and there's that one person that has a comment for everything? Like, maybe it's a huge group. And um, the, the speaker is speaking, and they, they maybe ask a question, it's a rhetorical question, maybe not a real question that they won't answer, but that person's like, me, me, I got an answer, you know. Um, I see it every day in my classrooms, and uh, every time I, I do a lesson, there's that one kid who wants to be the first one to answer, wants to be the one to be right, and those are great students, but they're so eager to be right and to get their attention that they, sometimes they miss the mark. And you're like, no, oh, just let me, let me finish. And then you can answer, you know, kind of thing. So Peter sort of reminds me of that. Um, so when we get to Acts 11, you see Peter change a good bit. He realizes something. And I want us to look at uh, what, what he realizes. So um, I'm reading from Acts 11. And I want you, if you would like to read along with me, we won't have it on the screen or anything, but you can follow along with me. This is Acts 11. So the apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. This is huge. The fact that he went and had a meal with people that were not Jewish, uncircumcised meant that they were not part of that Jewish faith. They were not part of that group. And so he was going in and having a meal with these people, and his, he comes back, and his friends go, what are you doing? Okay? So Peter wants to explain himself, so he goes, well, let me tell you what happened. He says, uh, he began and explained everything to them precisely as it had happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds of the air. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. 
As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift as he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. So when you hear that, Peter's like, it, it's like that moment where he goes, Oh, I'm not right all the time. And who am I to oppose God? Who am I to say anything against what God has said? At this moment, this is when he realized Jesus wasn't just the king of the Jews, he was the king of the world. And he was coming back not to just save Jewish people, but all people. And if he could see the Holy Spirit in these people that they believed, and the Holy Spirit came into them like they did, like he did in the, in the Jews, then all of a sudden he went, wow, this is amazing. He really is. God really did come to save every single one, even these people that we thought were unclean and impure and not worth his time. Look at these people that he's saving now. So um, there are lots of things that go on after that. There's church persecution and things like that. But the main thing that, uh, that I want to point out about Peter, since we're talking about Peter having this big mouth, the thing that I think is really helpful, for me, since I relate to Peter, um, is that he went from being a loud mouth, a big mouth, speaking out when he really shouldn't have, when he really didn't know what he was talking about. He went from that to all of a sudden being able to boldly proclaim the message of God, which was that it wasn't just for them, just for the Jews, it was for everyone. And God used even Peter's big mouth and his inability to do things right, and his sometimes lack of faith, and his sometimes inability to actually claim Jesus, he actually took that man and used him in great ways to proclaim the message to all people. This is the beginning of what led to you and me being able to be saved. If this hadn't happened, you and I might not have gotten the message. We're so thankful that God used Peter, a man with a big mouth, to proclaim the gospel. And Peter was used in many, many ways throughout his life. He studied, he followed, he loved the Lord all of his days. And I'm going to tell you, I hope that we recognize how fortunate we are that in the beginning when God created everything, he had us in mind. The Jews thought that he didn't, but he did. He had every single one of us in mind. And when we look at Peter, we can see how he used an ordinary man with a big mouth to turn things into a blessing for all of us so that we could all be included in God's heavenly realms. I hope that the Holy Spirit takes what you hear, what you see, what you read in Scripture, and I hope that the Holy Spirit will speak to you if you don't open your Bible, if you aren't listening for the Holy Spirit, you won't hear anything. You have to ask. You have to want it. And the thing about Peter is he wanted it. Even though he messed up, he wanted it. He wanted to love the Lord. He wanted to show the Lord how great he could be and how, what a leader he could be. And even when he was messing up, God was using him anyway. And I hope that you will take something from that. So, um, let us pray. Lord, thank you for this day, for the lessons that we can learn through a man named Peter. And God, we hope that the Holy Spirit will take the message that Peter shared with those people all those thousands of years ago. We hope that you will bless the people that are listening to it today. We know that the message that's there is just as important to hear for people in 2019 as it is for, for the people in Peter's day. And we just ask, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would continue to move through this place. And just like the disciples as they were, the apostles as they were, sitting there waiting, and Jesus told them to sit and wait, and they were waiting on your presence. And when it came, it created such a stir that the entire town came around and stood there going, what is going on? Lord, I ask that you do that very same thing right here. 
Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit be with each and every soul that comes through this church today. And as you go with each one, that you would spread your love everywhere that we go and use our hands and our feet to show your love, to show your mercy, to let other people know that they can be included just like we are. No matter what state they're living in, we can help them see how Jesus can save them, cleanse them. We thank you, Lord, for this day, and we ask your blessings upon all that are here and all that are gathered.